a clinical approach to pediatric heart murmurs. When evaluating a heart murmur, the most important thing to determine is whether the murmur is innocent or pathologic. The majority of cardiac murmurs in children are innocent with no underlying heart defect. However, it is important to identify pathologic murmurs that are a manifestation of cardiac abnormalities. In this lecture, we will go through how to take a focus history and a thorough physical exam to identify the likely cause of the murmur and determine whether further investigations or cardiologist referrals are necessary. We will discuss the common causes of heart murmurs and the investigations and management required. The history and physical exam should focus on searching for symptoms and signs suggestive of congenital heart disease. Innocent murmurs, by definition, have no clinical significance. Thus, children with innocent murmurs are always asymptomatic. In contrast, all symptomatic murmurs are pathologic, although some pathologic murmurs may be asymptomatic. Innocent murmurs are typically early ejection systolic, soft, short, at the sternal edge and without added sounds. All diastolic murmurs, except the venous hum, are pathologic, as are all pansystolic murmurs obscuring S1. Other features suggestive of pathology include loud murmurs more than grade 3 over 6, continuous murmurs, and murmurs with other associated cardiac abnormalities such as thrills, added sounds, and abnormal pulses. Congenital heart diseases that cause murmurs are often asymptomatic, though they may rarely present with cyanosis, syncope, cardiac failure, or a sudden state of cardiogenic shock. Cardiovascular collapse occurs when the ductus arteriosus closes in duct-dependent lesions, such as in coarctation of the aorta and hypoplastic left heart syndrome. When taking a history, it is important to ask about symptoms of cardiac failure. In an infant, this would manifest as poor feeding due to fatigue, resulting in smaller feeds, breathlessness on sucking, perspiration on feeding, and a resultant failure to thrive. The infant may also have respiratory symptoms, such as wheezing and tachypnea, or more rarely, cyanosis. In older children, features of concern include exercise intolerance, exertional dyspnea, exertional chest pain, and syncope. Congenital heart diseases that present early in infancy with congestive heart failure include large ventricular septal defects, a large patent ductus arteriosus, and critical aortic or pulmonary stenosis. It is also important to ask for a family history of sudden death, especially in young relatives, suggestive of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or a history of siblings with congenital heart disease. It is also useful to have an idea of the birth and developmental history of the child, including complications during pregnancy and maternal chronic diseases and medications, maternal diabetes mellitus, SLE, certain infections, anticonvulsant medications, and maternal substance abuse are associated with a higher rate of congenital heart defects. Also ask when the murmur was first detected, as obstructive lesions such as aortic and pulmonary stenosis are generally heard at birth or shortly after birth, whereas lesions in which shunts and flows depend on a delayed fall in pulmonary resistance, such as in atrial septal defects or ventricular septal defects, are more typically heard days or weeks after birth. On examination, Observe the child for cyanosis and respiratory distress at rest and when crying or feeding. Look for characteristic features of syndromes associated with cardiac disease, such as Down syndrome and Marfan syndrome. About 50% of patients with Down syndrome have congenital heart defects, the most common of which are arterial ventricular septal defects, also known as endocardial cushion defects, and ventricular septal defects. 69% of all patients with atrial ventricular septal defects have Down syndrome. This is heard as a hollow systolic murmur at the left lower sternal border and apex with an accentuated S2 and S3. Also observe for respiratory distress and wheezing, which may be a manifestation of cardiac failure, and assess for the presence of clubbing and decreased peripheral perfusion. Pulses should be easily palpable and equal in their intensity throughout the body. Generalize weak pulses suggest poor cardiac output, either due to severe heart failure or severe aortic stenosis. Pulses that are stronger in the upper extremities as compared to the lower extremities suggest coarctation of the aorta. Bounding pulses are felt in patients with a low diastolic pressure due to aortic regurgitation 
or presence of a systemic to pulmonary arterial connection, such as patent ductus arteriosus. The precordium should normally be quiet. Hyperdynamic circulation due to increased pulmonary blood flow, right ventricular hypertrophy or left ventricular hypertrophy will cause prominence of the right ventricular or left ventricular impulses. Palpable thrills are felt with murmurs grade 4 or higher. Prominent cardiac impulses or thrill indicate pathology. Hepatomegaly may reflect a high right atrial pressure associated with congestive cardiac failure. On auscultation, evaluate the heart sounds, assess for any added sounds and clicks, and describe the various characteristics of the murmur, such as the timing, character, length, quality, frequency, loudness, location best heard, and any radiation. Listen for each component of the cardiac cycle. Heart sounds in innocent heart murmurs are normal. S1 and S2 should be distinctly audible. S2 should split in inspiration and become single in expiration. A widely fixed split S2 can be heard in atrial septal defects. A loud P2 indicates pulmonary hypertension. Additional sounds, such as pre-systolic S4, are pathological, while early diastolic S3s may be normal. For the timing of the murmur, Listen for the absence of silence in a diastolic murmur. Innocent heart murmurs could be systolic and diastolic, such as in venous hum, but never purely diastolic. For character, a typical innocent heart murmur is vibratory or musical in quality. Harsh murmurs indicate pathology. For intensity, innocent heart murmurs are typically 1 to 2 upon 6 in intensity. Rarely, they are 3 upon 6, but never louder. This slide shows some common pediatric murmurs, where they are best heard, and their classic characteristics. If the history and physical exam findings are suspicious for a pathological murmur, initial investigations to order include a chest X-ray and ECG, in addition to a four-limb blood pressure. In the case of a murmur that is suspected to be pathologic, a cardiology referral is appropriate. Further investigations include 2D echocardiography and cardiac catheterization if necessary. Management depends on the cause of the murmur and may involve medical or surgical therapy, or both. Treatment should also address the symptoms, complications, and the overall health of the child, including adequate growth. In conclusion, cardiac murmurs in children may be innocent or pathological. First, determine if the child is symptomatic or not. Then. Assess the murmur for its timing, character, quality, frequency, loudness, location, and radiation. The definitive investigation for murmur is a 2D echocardiography. Management includes correcting the structural abnormality, but also addressing the complications. Quiz time! You are examining a 5-year-old child with no prior medical history. She has normal developmental milestones and has a weight within the 50th percentile. She is currently saturating well on oxygen and her lung sounds are clear. On auscultation of her heart, you hear S1 and S2 heart sounds. You also detect a continuous machinery murmur over the upper left sternal edge which radiates to the left clavicle. The murmur does not vary with position. Which of the following is this murmur most likely to reflect? The answer is patent ductus arteriosus. Next question. Which of the following is a cause of cyanotic congenital heart disease? The answer is transposition of great vessels. Next question. You are examining a three-day-old neonate with low-set ears, flattened nasal bridge, and a single palmar crease, suggestive of a genetic condition. Which is the most common congenital heart defect associated with this syndrome? The answer is atrioventricular septal defect. Note. The patent ductus arteriosus in an extremely preterm baby does not present very classically as a machinery murmur. In fact, it may even sound systolic. What would be more telling is therefore a hyperdynamic precordium plus diastolic drift. However, do note that this scenario is more for neonatal specialists.